Hi, I'm Adina Pintilie. I'm the director of Touch Me Not. Uh, I'm very happy to be here with you. Try to synchronize your breathing with the breathing of your partner. Be aware of the heartbeat. Spür das Herz des anderen. Open your eyes and just look at each other. Enjoy a moment of eye contact. Hi, welcome to the 32nd Teddy Award. I'm Jean Borbobak, and we're going to have a discussion with Adina Pintilia, director of Touch Me Not. Hi, welcome to the festival. Um, this is your first feature length film, yeah. and it's already in the competition section of the Berlinale. How does it feel? Well, we are really grateful for the trust Berlinale has in our work. Really, really grateful. Yeah. I mean, it means a lot for for the entire cast and crew of this film. I mean, all of us, we took a lot of risk, risks in yeah. the process. It was a seven years labor of love okay. to make it. Yeah. It, it. It has been challenging for all of us. And yeah. I'm particularly grateful to our amazing cast, which took yes. a lot of risks to open up in the process yeah. and to share it with the, with the camera. Yeah. So the film is a very interesting mix of fiction and documentary it really and tries reality to, I would and, say it's yeah reality. Certainly. and it blurs the boundaries between all these categories can you explain a bit what really draw you to to this particular way of telling this this story yeah I think I, I mean I, I keep saying this lately I think it's uh, you know when I was 20 I yeah. thought I know everything about things, including about intimacy. Yeah. I thought I knew how relationships should be, how, what love is, how desire functions, what beauty is. I thought I knew everything. Well, in the past 20 years, in contact with the real life and with real people, like nothing is so clear anymore. It's all yeah. relative. So basically, that's the core of the search. Yeah. It's my need to unlearn my scripts yeah. like the ideas that I was brought up with mm -hmm. in terms of what intimacy is yeah. and to rediscover, to look at the world with all the openness and curiosity and to discover how people experience intimacy in the most unexpected yeah. ways. Yeah. Now you said that uh, it was a very challenging process for all of you who worked on the film and you really had to, had to open up uh, in front of the camera. I was wondering you are very self-reflexive about the fact that it's a film within the film. We see multiple times the set, the camera, mm. um, and it really complicates the audience's relationship with the screen itself as well. So it really affects us. It's a very challenging experience for us as well because we have to focus on it and we have to constantly reflect on that we are an audience and we are watching something and we are watching something that is between reality and between fiction and documentary. Etc. So I was wondering if, would, if you would consider this way of filming and storytelling a particularly queer way of telling a story. If we if we consider queer as like this very broad concept that challenges dominant and hegemonic power structures. And it's different than yeah. the norm. Yeah. That's what you mean, basically, yeah. no. Yeah, I think that's a very interesting association. It's, it's basically a queer approach to cinema, yeah. fundamentally, if you want, in that yeah. sense. I was discussing now with, with uh, Gordon about the notion of queerness. And yeah. actually, like, it so much applies to the film. I mean, we didn't, it was not like something that we planned. But I guess real life is queer, you know, at, yeah. at its core, you know. I mean, we have to accept that. I mean, the film, it's, the film is basically propose, proposing a dialogue. Yeah. A dialogue, a, a, a mind-opening, hopefully a mind-opening yeah. experience about, about being different. Yeah. About different kind of beauties, different kind of bodies, different kind of experiences Desires. of intimacy and, like, about being different. It's about being different. Yeah. 
yeah, the absolutely. Film. Um, now, the body is a very central element in this film. Like even the opening is, it's if we are traveling through a landscape of a body, we have a lot of really extreme close-ups. It has a very interesting effect. It, it has kind of an alienating effect as well, but also like we are really close, like we are, we are in a closeness that we don't usually experience, I would say, especially not in cinema. What was your aim with this? Well, I think if we talk particularly about the opening shot, it's yeah. like it, it's like the the other body, the other's yeah. body, as a different planet, as a territory, yeah. as a landscape full of wonders and mysteries, yeah, and absolutely. you don't know what's there. So basically, it's the skin of the other, yeah. which we experience, you know, like daily basis. You know, my skin, your skin, it's something really like basic, normal. Yeah. But if you if you think of it and you, if you feel this in relationship with the other human being, that's the materialization of the border, of that border, the transition mm. area between you and the other, which basically the film is investigating at, yeah. in, at different levels, emotional, like um, conceptual, physiological, right. all, all those kind of levels. Yeah. Um, is that area between the two human beings yeah. which we explore. Yeah. I find the role of sexuality in particular very interesting in the film. It, it sort of serves as a bridge between body, the psyche, the soul, let's say. What was your take on it or, or what is your understanding of sexuality within this particular film? I think like I see sexuality as a part of a like more complex uh, yeah. uh, like like intimacy includes sexuality, uh, but includes also many other layers which intermingle. So if you talk about sexuality, I am, I, you talk also about the emotional implications of yeah. sexual, sexual experience. I mean, there is, for example, this, uh, uh, it's a book which was a study book for all of us in the team, which is called Arousal by Michael Bader. It's a psychoanalyst, yeah. which was, um, explaining how our sexual fantasies or our sexual behavior it's a sort of a gate into our psyche so the moment you explore the the way you you, you react yeah. in in your sexuality you can have an understanding about the dynamics behind yeah. that like right. the scripts the the damaging scripts that you already have in your brain which are influencing your ability to be to feel safe or to feel relaxed, to be able to experience sexuality. So it's basically what he does in his sessions with his uh, uh, clients. He doesn't call them patients, it's clients, yeah. because it's, it can be, you know, any of us. Yeah. I don't, it's, it's about not putting a label that it's a disease, yeah. but it's a particular way of experiencing an yeah. aspect of your life. So he does, what he does, he investigates this area, and by this he can unlock blockages which are about other things than yeah. sexuality. Yeah. Like, for example, yeah. It it's, it's, a long, yeah. it's a long discussion, but yeah. it's just sexuality, it's an aspect of, of the complexity of our psyche. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And it seems to be key in, in, in like coming to terms with your need of intimacy, I would say, in the film. One of the characters, Christian, says that I was a brain without body until I came in touch with the pleasure of sexuality. And then another character, Hannah, says that uh, there is no weird in sexuality, only dangerous. That's anything that is not dangerous, it shouldn't be forbidden. Uh, well, she didn't say it exactly like that. Yeah, I need yeah, to be I'm very, I need, I need to be very specific because it's, yeah. it's quite important. She Please. says there's nothing weird in sexuality. Yeah. You know, there just can be things which are harmful for you, for yeah. your psyche, but nothing, nothing else should be forbidden. Yeah. And actually with her, it's a whole debate if those should be forbidden as well and what is harmful, you know, yeah. because uh, we, we have this like, it's all about consent. Yeah. And uh, it, as long as it's consensual, I mean, it, I think it needs to be respected. And yeah. of course, the discussion comes about, which is a very complex discussion, who can have a decision for themselves. And Definitely. I do believe in that everybody needs to have the freedom to decide for themselves yeah. no matter what the implications are that that's a long debate but uh, 
we started from Hannah. So from this thing that nothing is weird in sexuality. Yeah. So it's your way to play this game. Yeah. And I think it's fascinating, she yeah. says at one point. Yeah, yeah, right. So there is an interesting representation of disability, or I really liked it when the character said that I'm not disabled, I'm differently Different. abled. Um, can we talk a bit about this? What, what was your And I your don't suffer goal? from a disability. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's, it's very refreshing to see something like that because usually it's a completely different representation. Yeah, yeah I mean, I don't know. I, we have in, a, in our press kit, we have a, a fragment from uh, his motivation, which I yeah. think it's great to, to bring up. Yeah, please. Because at one point, Christian um, told me in our research, he said, look, Adina, I'm not afraid of this film or us yeah. being attacked. You know, I think it's like the people who will attack us uh, are the people who consider us like weak and asexual. So that's basic, basically, it's a way to patronize and it's a way of discriminating us. It's not the film which is abusing us or yeah. explo like exploiting us. It's just this attitude which is patronizing. And actually, uh, it's very important for me to share with the world that people with disabilities and with different bodies have the same needs. Mm -hmm the same desires yeah. like any other human being and actually I have the right to explore to enjoy my body and to, yeah. to exist out there as a sexual being and we have a project together to explore further about the about beauty which is the film yeah. deals with that Certainly. beauty which is different than the norm bodies which are different than the norm um, uh, we plan for example to do a project a film project and also uh, like a performative project with tableau vivant in which christian is reenacting uh, is we reenact uh, famous paintings from yeah. the art history mm -hmm. with Venus as a central yeah. element and he would be the Venus, Venus. in that okay. and we will try to play with that and to put into discussion yeah. this this yeah right normative yeah approaches what I also found interesting with this particular portrayer of differently abled uh, bodies is that at the same time he seems to be the character who is the most abled emotionally. Was this something that you wanted to play with? I think it it it, it came out in the process, and I think it's beautiful yeah. because he becomes like a sort of a reference. You know, he Certainly. becomes like it's it's for for uh, uh, the relationship that grew between uh, him and uh, and Thomas was absolutely wonderful, and it's yeah. it's it's fully authentic, and actually in the film fiction functioned as a sort of a safety net, as a structure okay. yeah. within which we could work with reality and with authentic encounters between yeah. people. Um, and yeah. what happened between Thomas and Christian, it's, again, it's a fusion of yeah. reality and fiction, yeah. but it's really authentic, you know. Yeah. I mean, you, it's very difficult and it's not relevant in the end to define what was staging, what was not, yeah. you know, it just doesn't matter. What matters is the core of the journey that, that uh, came out and he became like a sort of a spiritual guide in the film. Yeah. You know, you follow, that, yeah. it's in, in the back it of your mind, through. his discourse, which is very progressive, is very mind opening, yeah. that, that yeah. it's coagulating yeah. the film. Yeah. So sex work is another thing that is portrayed in a in a very different way than we usually see it. It's almost as as if it, it's it's a tool for self discovery and healing. I would say and, and social work, you know, yeah, instrument yeah, of social yeah, change. Certainly, yeah. And it's very interesting to see that we we don't see this portrayed like this. I don't think I've ever seen it portrayed like this. What what was your particular aim to to bring this into the picture? When I when I started the. Um, research uh, one of the one of the areas of the research was i really wanted to work with real sex workers yeah. and i came in the process with my own preconceived ideas yeah. and in the process i discovered so many fascinating stuff i mean there are so many of course i am i am convinced there is this social uh, unfortunate aspect of 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 people being like abused and being forced to have sexual or, but there are a lot of other workers which are doing it out of their own will with various motivations for for example for transgender people it's often yeah. a tool for self discovery and for because they have um, this complicated uh, 
um, how do you say journey in accepting yeah. their own body yeah, and it's, their it's own important. being different and yeah. it's important yeah. basically yeah. it's a tool to research yeah. what they need in their yeah. sexual life and so yeah. uh, it, it can have different significance yeah. for different people and yeah. it actually can have really a, a, a huge beneficial impact on the clients for example what hana does it's yeah, a combination exactly. of psychotherapy and sex work yeah. it's definitely or what shani does it's the same thing shani love uh, yeah. you uh, i mean i recommend you to read about his work it's quite yeah. quite interesting it's uh, shanilove.com okay. and he actually won the award for the the best sex worker of the year at sexual yeah. freedom awards in london in 2015 yeah. And he has really interesting and very well articulated uh, discourse, like yeah. human rights oriented discourse. Yeah. Uh, it's very interesting to read yeah. about that because it's an so article in specifically called Conscious King Saves the World, okay. which I warmly recommend yeah. Yeah. a read. As, as a final question, and that actually links up I to, to King. To talk. Yeah, yeah I, I, I could go on for forever basically. But so sex is portrayed as an art, I would say especially in those scenes when we are in that sex club in that in that environment where where there is like a lot of kinky things going on and it really is portrayed as a form of art and one of the characters once mentions it in the yeah, film Christian, yeah, yeah that sex is basically an art do you agree with that and, and do you think that that this is very important to bring out I think it's, I mean, it, there are several questions here and it might be a complex uh, conceptual discussion yeah. here yeah, about certainly. art, <laughs> you know, but I do think that sexuality, as I was, we discussed in the beginning of the interview, that it's it's really complex uh, 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 area for self-discovery, yeah. for self-exploration. And it's it has a huge potential for self-growth. If you look with raw honesty and you you look at yourself in this area and, and you follow and you explore your behavior in terms of sexuality and intimacy, I think it's a very important tool for like healing, self-growth and self-understanding. And also by this, by not being so judgmental then mm. on your yeah. on yourself, you will be able to be in other terms with the other human beings. Yeah. Absolutely. To have a different way to relate to the other. Yeah. And then we come to the discussion, what is art, you know, because when what is cinema? So I, I like think it's a form of, essentially it's a form of dialogue. So us as the filmmakers that we are investigating, we have this subjective experience of reality that we express through cinema. We share this mm. with the audience. Yeah to create a dialogue, to have an impact, to... So I think it's essentially a dialogue. Yeah. And the mirroring yeah. process also. It's like a mirror yeah. put in front of the audience that and exactly. that can trigger or not things. No, it certainly does. Like, at certain points I felt like, that. oh my God, am I looking at myself on the screen? Or, or but, possibilities but of myself. Has. Yeah, <coughs> certainly. Well, thank you so much for this very empowering film, I would say and congratulations once again and thank you for the interview and we are also very grateful to be here yeah. and i hope you get the chance to talk with the wonderful characters in the film yeah. it, it can yeah. be really really yeah. eye-opening yeah I, I would love that yeah thank you so much thank you thank you thanks